Good morning, Countryside friends. Welcome to worship on Sunday morning, June 14th, 2020. Uh, before we actually get into the worship service that will be shown also on KMTV in an hour, we have uh, two very special things just for our online audience. The first is we want to let you in on something that happened earlier this week, which was our very first membership class that was held entirely remotely, joined remotely via Zoom. And so we recorded that liturgy online and we want to uh, share that with you just like we would if we were physically present. 13 members took the class, took the classes, and, joined, and decided even while they couldn't get together with us physically, they wanted to join us spiritually. And won't that be a wonderful day when we can finally get together and see them, hopefully before any of us gets too much older. The second thing we'll show after that is the, our delayed Easter offering to uh, youth emergency services. There's a clip that was originally uh, about youth emergency services that, was orig that originally aired on KETV and uh, we can't get permission to show that on KMTV as a rival station's story. So we're gonna show that to you as background for your consideration for our delayed Easter offering. And I'll remind you of that at the end of the service as well. So without further ado, let's welcome our new members. Today we welcome those who wish to affirm their baptism by uniting with us at Countryside Community Church in this household of faith. As your name is called, please wave your hand. Tyler Brown. Hello. John Erickson. Hello. Anna Hardy. Anna Hardy. Hello. Darren Cruz and Judy Hartley. Mark and Mary Malliard. We're here. Amy Stoddard. Hello. Artis Saltz. Hello. And Roger and Judy Wabel. Why? These people have found nurture and support in the midst of the family of Christ. Through prayer and study, they have been led by the Holy Spirit to affirm their baptism and to claim in our presence their covenantal relationship with Christ and the members of the church. They are here for service to Jesus Christ using the gifts which the Holy Spirit bestows. Candidates for membership of Countryside Community Church do you desire to affirm your baptism into the faith and family of Jesus Christ? If so, please say, I do. I do. I do. I do. I do. do you profess Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior? And do you promise by the grace of God to be Christ's disciple, to follow in the way of our Savior, to resist oppression and evil, to show love and justice, and to witness to the work and word of Jesus Christ as best you are able? If so, please answer, I promise with the help of God. I promise with the help of God. By your baptism, you were made one with us in the body of Christ, the church. Today, we rejoice in your pilgrimage of faith, which has brought you to this time and this place. We give thanks for every community of faith that has been your spiritual home and we celebrate your presence in this household of faith. Do you promise to participate in the life and mission of this family of God's people, sharing regularly in the worship of God and enlisting in the work of this local church as it serves the community in the world? If so, answer, I promise with the help of God. I, I promise, promise with, with the help, help of God. God. Beautiful. We, the members of Countryside Church and the whole body of Christ, welcome you into the Countryside family. God grant that loving and being loved, serving and being served, we may celebrate God's love and expand Christ's kingdom on the earth. So then you are no longer strangers and sojourners, but you are fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God built upon a foundation of the apostles and prophets, Christ Jesus himself being the chief cornerstone in whom the whole structure is joined together into a holy temple in the Lord. I hope all of you online will join us prayerfully from wherever you are in welcoming the first ever Zoomed <laughs> Countryside <laughs> Community Church membership class. Welcome to, as members of Countryside Community Church. Yay. Thank you. 
As you know, Youth Emergency Services, whose uh, CEO is Mary Mites, one of our members, is the recipient of our delayed Easter offering. They do tremendous work in the community. KETV did a wonderful story on them. We want to show that clip to you. Uh, for your consideration in terms of deciding what you want to do for youth emergency services. So before moving on, let's see this profoundly good news story. How many folks out there helping to get food to those in need? Youth Emergency Services is doing that and more for young people who don't have a home to go to. KETV News Watch 7's Michelle Bender has the story. The governor's direct health measures call for you to stay home. But what happens when you don't have a home? Youth Emergency Services is changing its operations to help Omaha's nearly 3,000 homeless and near homeless youth during this pandemic. Before the COVID-19 crisis, the outreach center at Youth Emergency Services would be packed with teens already in crisis. We know youth are out there and they need food and services and just some support. Now staff members pack up the pantry, oatmeal and cereal, fill up the van, drive out into the community and search for the young people who need help. Since the pandemic started, we have found ourselves going out to find them more often than what we normally would do. Street Outreach Supervisor Jamise Williams says the teens who live on the street are finding places to follow the direct health measures and stay put, even if it's not a permanent address. What I'm hearing is that they are staying in place. They're not having to do as much couch surfing as they had done previously. Yes says while the youth are staying in place, it's important to stay connected. We don't want the number of homeless youth to go up because of this. And so if we can get them food and help them with other resources while they're there, then we'll be fine. They also try to educate the youth about the signs of the coronavirus. And there's a nurse on standby for telehealth appointments and staff is there to listen. A lot of them are feeling um, emotionally distraught because their normal has been taken from them and they're having to get used to a new normal. These youth, whether they're couch surfers or whether they're completely street dependent, they're survivors. Yes, stop taking clothing donations during this COVID-19 crisis, but it still needs food, toiletries, and cleaning supplies for the youth. We'll have that information for you at KETV.com. In Omaha, Michelle Bandur, KETV Newswatch 7. I hope all of you will join us prayerfully from wherever you are in welcoming the first ever Zoomed <laughs> Countryside Community <laughs> Church membership class. Welcome to, as members of Countryside Community Church. Welcome to worship at Countryside Community Church, Home Edition. In the Hebrew Scriptures, the prophet Ezekiel looked over a vast valley of dry bones, asking, can these bones yet live? Well, as we've continued our conversations with African-American leaders in our community, we're hearing similar questions about 24th Street, the very place where riots took place 50 years ago and buildings burned asking, uh, can these bones yet live? We heard that from Thomas Warren last week, and this week we'll hear the same question from C.T. Williamson, a native of Omaha, an African-American leader who works for Girls, Inc. She has some special wisdom to share with us. 
both in terms of the scriptures and the lived reality of people in Omaha. Now, before going any further, I do want to make a special announcement about the future of worship uh, on KMTV this, this summer. Uh, for the next two weeks, we will be off the air, but we will continue uh, to be streaming online at 10 a.m. at countrysideucc.org. You can get there just by going to our website at 10 a.m. Now, starting in July and continuing through August, we will be on KMTV every week at 11 o'clock, and we will continue to be streaming at 10 o'clock online. So, starting July, all summer long, 10 a.m. online at countrysideucc.org and 11 a.m. on KMTV. We heard back overwhelmingly from you when we asked the question, are these relevant? And we heard back absolutely yes. So we entered a new contract with KMTV and we're very pleased to offer worship throughout the summer. So now let's enter worship by taking a deep breath in, letting it out slowly. And in so doing, clearing away whatever obstacles you may have brought with you to experiencing the presence of God in this time of worship. Let us worship God. I'm going to do an arrangement by Chuck Moronic called Wade in the Water. And uh, <coughs> talking about hope, this song was used back in the, in the mid-1800s, between 1835 and 1865, as a signal to slaves to tell them how they can avoid capture when they escape. The song tells them to take the water rather than take the land. And that was, that was intended to throw the hounds off so that they wouldn't be found. And so this is Wade in the Water, sung by Carol Rogers.
Hello, friends. Now, when we say love God and love your neighbor as yourself, we really mean it. The work that we're doing right now, whether it's marching in the streets or challenging our old ideas and understandings, is good and difficult work. And this work is not going to end when the protests stop, nor can we allow it to end. So in order to keep going, we need to remember that it is a profound and radical act to rest and to know ourselves well enough to recognize when we need a break. Now, taking care of ourselves looks different for everyone, especially right now when some of our go-to practices, like hanging out with beloved family and friends, might not be so readily available. But there are some fundamental ways to care for our bodies, our minds, and our spirit that can help us continue the good and difficult work. First, take good care of your a physical self. Our beautiful bodies are part of God's creation and require care and keeping. You got to remember to eat good, nutrient-dense food that provides your body with the materials it needs to recover fully every day. Now, there's nothing wrong with cookies, and a lot of people find comfort in food. That's perfectly fine. But as my wise friend Shelly might advise, maybe have a handful of carrots first. Sleep is also crucial. These things that are going on might be keeping us up at night. Allow yourself to take a nap. Get some Z's however you can. Remember that sleep is necessary for a good and sharp mind and a well-functioning body. To give your mind a little bit of a rest, give yourself permission to take a step away from your timelines, your threads, and your posts. Social media is going to be there when you get back. Watch a movie, reread a book that you love, or simply sit and notice the wind blowing through the trees. And I cannot stress enough the importance of daily prayer and weekly Sabbath. I know that we're all busy, but there is time to sit and acknowledge the presence of God in and around you. This time centers us in the spirit and connects us to creation in ways we may never fully understand. Sit quietly, listen for the spirit, walk barefoot in the grass, put your hand to the earth and learn the flow of the natural world. Rest, my friends, rest well, and come back tomorrow rejuvenated and respirited. Stoke the fires in your bellies with a breath of fresh air. Now let's pray. God of many names, we honor you in our work and in our rest. Help us remember that there is time for both. Amen. See you next week. Hi, I'm Candy. I've been in Omaha most of my life. I grew up in Bellevue. Um, I suppose if I'm talking about hopes and dreams for a safer, more equitable Omaha, it's hard to pin down just one thing, but I think the first step is recognizing and vocalizing and owning our deep seated bigotry and racism and paying close attention to who we ask to take on that burden and whether or not we're asking that of ourselves as well. So there's a lot of things that could come into that space to fill that void, but I, I couldn't say that any one thing would fix it, but addressing our deeply racist um, justice system would be one. We live in a society that's built on the backs of slaves, and we need to we need to pay closer attention to like, what that's done to us as a people. Uh, I'm Sarah, and um, I lived in Bellevue since sixth grade, and I moved to Vincent a few years ago. And um, I just hope that Omaha can unite to um, do something positive and some constructive changes. Um, I think that's something that everyone should be able to get behind no matter no their political views or their background or the color of their skin. Mm. Unity and positivity. Great. Thank you so much. Two weeks ago today we celebrated Pentecost. That is the day in which we remember the coming of the Holy Spirit on the disciples gathered uh, after Christ's death and resurrection uh, in Jerusalem for the celebration of Pentecost. And uh, two things happened that day, uh, one in modern times and one 2,000 years ago. Uh, Peter, 2,000 years ago, the apostle, is said to have quoted to the Jewish crowd uh, from the prophet Joel saying, in the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, 
and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Now, two weeks ago in modern times, I got up in the morning and found that the irises in my yard were in fullest bloom. They were so big, the flowers, and so gorgeous with dew just dripping off of them. Later in the evening, the moonlight shone softly upon them, and I was just transfixed by their beauty and their glory. And I thought to myself, you know, these flowers are so generous. I mean, the irises never asked me for any kind of qualifying statement about myself before they just showed me their glory. They didn't ask me, was I right with the Lord? They didn't ask me uh, if I had done any good deeds that day. I mean, nature just gives and gives and gives to us without asking uh, about our qualifications or whether we deserve to be given to. Jesus himself says the, the Lord makes the sun shine upon uh, and the rain to fall upon the, the righteous and the unrighteous. And that's just the way nature works. It is inherently generous, flooding us with gifts over and over and over again. And over and over and over again, we either fail to notice or fail to deeply appreciate and certainly fail to give a little something back to nature for all it gives to us. It just keeps giving. Consequently, we can have all kinds of practices that, that actually undermine nature's own ability to give us such glory, constantly undermine it until it, it just can't do it anymore. It just keeps giving and giving and giving until finally there's nothing left to give if we're not paying attention, if we're not responding with gratitude, if we're not giving a little as we've received. Now, you may be thinking I'm off the side of what's the, truly the subject this morning, which is racism and how we are to live as one people in Omaha. But I'm not so sure these things are disconnected from one another. If you ask me, the most generous people in the entire United States are African American people and indigenous American peoples as a general rule. I mean, from the very beginning of the interactions between white people and people of color in the United States, white people have been oppressing and denigrating people of color. And yet, after all of this, after slavery, after what has been done on the reservations and the reservation system and, and, and inflicting abuse after abuse after abuse on these populations of people, it is amazing to me that anyone who is a person of color would speak to a white person in America. I mean, if the situation were reversed and white people were treated as poorly as black and brown people have been treated historically and over and over and over again, would we who are white be as generous spirited toward those who are black and brown as they are towards us? Oh yes, of course, there are exceptions. There are people who really don't want to talk to us, white people that is, but by far, the generosity is still continues to be astonishing. Just like those irises, generosity is astounding. Not asking nearly as much as you would think about qualifications for receiving the good that is being given. But just as with nature, you can't keep ignoring, can't keep failing to appreciate, can't keep undermining the very abilities of a whole populations of people to be generous and expect that generosity to continue. At some point, things have to change because there's nothing left to be given. I think we're quite close to that cultural moment, perhaps even cross the line. But that's when the scriptures really speak to me. They speak to C.T. Williamson, our guest as well. The prophet Joel says when the chips are down, that's when young people begin to dream dreams and old people begin to see visions. People start seeing that the reality that they have created has become a box that is too small for anyone to live within. Not just black and brown people, but white people too. That's when the spirit of the living God is best able to open people's eyes when we finally realized enough is enough. 
none of us can breathe in the box in which we've confined ourselves in terms of our relationships in society. Some of the dynamics we're seeing in society today, uh, which appear to be like increased racism, increased intolerance for the other, decreased willingness to, uh, to maintain any kind of social contract or social safety net with people, is not the result of so many bad things coming to the world that now it's just become like a, a virus. I think it's because in the last century, so many good things came into the world that have now sunk so deeply into the very tap roots of our humanity and, and affected so many people that the old power structures have been turned on their heads. And those who benefited most from those power stru stru structures and, and are mo who are most in, therefore invested in maintaining them are fighting for their future, a future that is dead on arrival because the Spirit has lifted too many people's vision. Too many people are dreaming God's dream, seeing God's realm and the possibilities for enacting it in our midst. Even people who have no notion of God seem to be tapping into this very God reality. Many people are asking if this recent movement towards racial justice is going to last more than a few weeks or months. And so many of us have noticed there seems to be something different about it this time. And there, well, there's a lot different about it this time. One of those things is if you're looking for evidence, look at the constituency of the protesters. Look how diverse they are. So much good has come to the world. So many people have woken up that now the power structures that have enforced the status quo for so long are struggling for their very existence. And if the movement for racial justice is to be maintained here in Omaha, I would suggest that we look to what Candy and Sarah said earlier when, they, when we asked about their hopes and dreams for the future. Candy said we need to acknowledge the deep-seated bigotry and racism that exists here in, in Omaha and consider the effects it's had on the populations that have been the recipients of that racism. And Sarah suggested that we get united to join hands with our sisters and brothers of all races and colors and to do something positive together and another thing positive and another positive thing and keep doing positive things to one another, that is what taps into that basic generous spirit of nature and reality and God. That's the flow that movements try to engender. Those who uh, are trying to defend the traditional power structures don't see that. They only see their end because truly there it must be an ending to those power structures. But what is trying to be birthed has nothing to do with destruction, but rather generosity and a generous inclusion of all people, not just certain ones. All people, including those with whom we've been in conflict in the past. That's the kind of vision that God engenders, the kind of vision that doesn't come naturally to us human beings, but eventually when enough of us are broken apart, that's when the Spirit of God plunges inside and shows us a new way of seeing reality, a new way of seeing our neighbor, and a new way of acting in God's spirit of grace, compassion, and love.
which is thy king, not nor vain, empty praise. Thou mine inheritance now and always. Thou and thou only first in my heart. Great God of heaven, my treasure. Well, CT, it's wonderful to have you uh, with us today. I really appreciate your, your joining us during this very difficult time. I know you have um, been a longtime um, Omaha resident. So you grew up here, didn't you? Yes, I was, I was living South Omaha when I was born. And uh, we moved North Omaha when I was at the age of four. At, what, what was it like growing up at, in, in a town like Omaha? It was wonderful. We walked everywhere. I think that one thing that I know now as an adult that I didn't know as a child was that our parents created barriers for us. Mm. And so even though maybe there was, even though there was racial unrest in the South or whatever, you know, there was a there was a minute before we realized what was going on, and our neighborhood was there was blacks, there was whites, there was Jews. We just there was it was like a Heinz Fifty Seven. Twenty um, Fourth Street was booming. Anything we wanted or needed, we could walk down there and and get it. My dad had um, what you would call a running tally at most of the grocery stores and things down there where we could just go in and get whatever we needed. Um, it was good being a kid. It was good being a kid. You think it's harder now for kids or easier or is it just kind of that? Oh, I think it's harder. The stress, the, the stress that they have, the worry that they have. Um, it's yes, it's, it's, it's much harder. And then with all of the extra, um, it's just it's just amazing, you know. I, I can't imagine being a child in something like this, and I I can't go out and play like I want to. I I I can't hug my neighbor friend like I want to. It's just it's just they've got so many X's and so few O's, you know. There's just Hmm. Um, the stress has to be just unbelievable. Yeah. And I know you, you were here um, in Omaha then when Omaha was burning too in the 60s and so forth. I was. Yeah. I was. What was that? I, I, I was. And I, I, uh, I can't believe that we're back to that again. That. Um, it's been hard uh, trying to watch some of it on TV because it does it does remind you. Now, all that happened on 24th Street. You heard me say I grew up on 25th Street. Uh, that wasn't where I was living when that happened. But I still had family that um, we got in our car and went down to get my auntie to get her out of the harm's way, to just bring her out to spend the how much ever long she needed to with us. But to see all of that happening now and it's like deja vu. It's like nothing has nothing has really changed. What I see when I'm watching TV now is 
there's a lot of white people out. Back in that day when they were doing it, there was just black people basically doing the burning and burning their own neighborhood up. Um, if you drive through that area, not much has changed since the fire. There hasn't been any, hard, well, I can't say there hasn't been any new things built, but there, there's still a lot of destruction, empty lots um, that there's, after 50 some years, there's never been anything done about it. Um, I mean, it, it's, it's heartbreaking to know that we had everything that we could possibly want on 24th Street, mm -hmm. and now we have very little. Yeah. And so, yeah, it is. It is hard. It, it is. It is heartbreaking to to watch the fires and things because I I know that feeling. You, you mentioned the the uh, more diverse involvement in these protests, um, and you certainly see a lot more um, diversity uh, there. I know that um, I've also seen and heard from a Black Lives Matters leaders and so forth that um, that additional diversity isn't always as helpful as maybe the people showing up have thought they would be, or is that a net gain or, or, or a minus, or what, how do you evaluate that? What, I, what it appears to me and what I see on TV is a lot of young people that's getting their, their, their voice, uh, their, their, oh, I, I don't know this. I hope, I mean, this makes me cry. I, I, I it hurts so bad. It, um, it says in the Bible, and they should be led by young people. I, I think that that is, I think that is happening. I think the youngsters are going to be the ones to turn this around. I'll be seventy-four this year, right. and um, we we have been put down so much in our life, and not listened to. So this new generation, they're not taking that anymore. And that's what I see all across the country. Yeah. You know, listen, have you ever seen anything like this spread like this all across the country? It's sad that it took something like Floyd's to make people speak out and they're speaking out all over the country that this is unjust it I don't understand why it takes something like that to make us all aware and want to say things it's, I mean you know it's like, it's like Christmas Christmas everybody wants to give Christmas over, the giving is, is over. You might say you, you think that this racism is, is, is bad, but, but what are you doing? Or what, what you're doing, is it making a difference? Or is it, or is it Christmas time? You know? Called into unity with one another and the whole creation, let us pray for our shared world. Creator God, the whole earth is yours. Where there is fire, bring cool air and new growth. Where there is flooding, bring abatement. Where there is drought, bring rain. Inspire us to care for what you have provided. And God of healing, we have created divisions that you will not own. In places of conflict, raise up leaders who work to develop lasting peace and reconciliation. Encourage organizations and individuals who protest and work towards systemic change for a world of peace and justice. And nurturing God, you care for those who are harassed and helpless. Protect and defend those who are abused. Heal those who are sick. Feed all who are hungry. Empower all whose voices go unheard. And help us to respond to the pressing needs of our neighbors. 
safeguard all those who are held in retention, separated from their families, as we work toward policies of acceptance and welcome, and encourage organizations who care for immigrants forced to leave their homes and travel long distances to find a safe place to rest. And God of abundant life, you provide a plentiful harvest of gifts and resources. Prepare us to labor and gather the fruits of this congregation that we might discover new ways of living. Minister to us in our work that we do not lose heart, but continue to reach out to those who long to hear a voice of hope in the midst of uncertainty and despair. We pray for all those who are ill, those who struggle, those trying to heal relationships, and for all those who are grieving. We pray especially for these we now name aloud or in our hearts. Stir our hearts, O Lord, as we pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debt, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Uh, my religion is African American Episcopal, mm -hmm. and I'm an ame -er. Yeah. We had a partnership with Countryside and Temple, Temple Israel where we did gardening together. Really? Do you, I, I, I looked so forward to that, um, you know, when, when, when that was happening. We, were, uh, we, we dug up, there was empty lots across the street from my church, and we all came together and, and, and did a garden um, where we were able to give, you know, vegetables away to, to everybody. But I think you, if you ask some of the people from your church that have been there a minute, they'll probably remember that. Um, That's fascinating. Uh, we, we just actually, with Temple Israel and the American Muslims Institute, established a, a new garden at, at the uh, Tri-Faith Commons. So that sounds, maybe we, there's some possibilities of renewing that. Uh, yeah, yeah. That would be fun. Are there some, some areas where you think we have moved forward with respect to race and other areas where we, you think we have moved behind um, you know, since you were, time you were growing up? I think we put bandages on it. Uh, but obviously, we haven't, um, the cut hasn't gone deep enough where it's stitched up and it's healing from within out. Um, I, I don't know how else to ex explain that, but when I say to you, you can drive out 24th Street and see lots, empty lots where buildings and things used to be there, and, and it, it, the empty lots are still there. In some cases, there are some buildings there. They're just kind of boarded up or not even, not even in use. When I go through the community on my way to church, um, it hurts me that I don't readily see any stores. It hurts me that I don't readily see any theaters. It hurts me that I don't readily see places that would be inviting for young people to come and just hang out, shoot pool, play basketball. And I, I, and I'm not talking about the established agencies, such as where I work, Girls Inc. or Boys and Girls Club or North Star. I'm just talking about a place. My brothers and them, they could go down on 21st Street. There was a couple of pool halls. Now, I never did go any of the pool halls because those were boys. That's where boys went then. But it was some place for them to go and, and, and hang out. Um, there were There were groups are there were organizations like within Kellum school that I mean we could go to on a Tuesday night for a dance you know there was a roller skating ring there was there was just a lot within the community right now 
anytime the community want anytime anybody in the community wants to do anything you got to drive past 72nd Street to make that happen. Knowing all the time that people don't want us out there past 72nd Street, it's been said over and over and over again. And, and, and things happen because of that attitude. And, 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 and I, don't know how, I don't know how you can change that. I don't, in, in the years, in the, I've been at Girls Inc. over 20 some years and um, I've, went, I, I've gone out on a number of field trips with our youngsters. And, and I tell you, there's been many times that I just really wanted to, like they say, take my earrings off and get down. But I knew I couldn't because I've got these young people looking at me. How, how, how am I going to, to fix this? CT, in terms of economic development, um, what challenges does North Omaha face right now? Part, part, one of the things that I feel like hurts the North Omaha community because it, it's, it's, no, it's a known factor. And, and if I wanted to be real mean, I guess I could say names of who I'm talking about. But the North Omaha community actually is run by white men who what we get is what they want to give. Not always what we want, but what they, what they want to give. It's like saying, hey, I want to invite you to dinner. Tell me what you like. They say, hey, I'm going to invite you to dinner, and I'm going to tell you what you're going to get. Hmm. And so I think that um, a number of our black leaders wear golden handcuffs because they're in positions that they're in because of these white men that run things. And um, how do you fix that? So those that get to that see this video, what can you do to, to fix that? Those golden handcuffs sometimes stops you from being a whole male. It becomes about you and how you can get further up that ladder instead of concentrating on what you can do for the community. So any ideas of how, how, how to um, modify that situation? You, a lot of the companies around here, the nonprofits who, um, who work within the community serving predominantly African-American youngster or people, I mean, if you follow them back to their building, what does their building look like? Is it diverse? You're saving people, but do you look like who you serve? We need to be honest with ourselves. Black folks, sometimes when we're talking amongst ourselves, you know, we say there's a little, there's a little rhyme. If, you, if, you're right, if you're white, you're right. If you're black, get back. You know, and that's a little something that, I, that I'll share with you that we say among ourselves. But think about what I just said. Um, and that's kind of almost kind of how the world is, is depleted. You know, you, it's, it's always a white knight on a shining white horse. Uh, the black knight is on a, you know, dressed in black on a black. I don't even think that... You know, you, you may not pay attention to that kind of stuff. I do. You know, it's like when you, you're blackballed. What does that mean? Something bad. It's, uh, you know, and I, 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 this just goes on and on and on. But I, I think that there are a number of people in our community that could, I could, that could put a menu together hmm. to say, this is what we like and this is what we want. And how can we work to make this happen? Hmm. Uh, what is the role of, of faith in your life in terms of uh, guiding you through crises like this? And that's what I depend on probably more than anything else in the world because... No matter what happens to me 
or what happens around me, you can't take that. You can't take that from me. Um, you know, I pray all the time. Um, like before this, I, I, I don't usually do things like this because it makes me so uneasy and whatever. And I'm, af I'm afraid I may say the wrong thing to offend someone or whatever. But um, I pray, I took, like I said to you, I prayed that I, 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 I can say something that someone will hear to say, oh, I can make a difference with that. Um, I think the real world, it, it is not a them or, or us. We're all in this t together. So do you think that there is a, if, if, if you were, uh, if you were God and had a, a message for Omaha or, or if you think God does have a message for Omaha, um, what would it be right now? I think God has a message for the world. Mm. I, I think this pandemic, this is, this is CT talking. I think this pandemic is some of God's work. And I know some people will fringe, you know, God didn't have a problem with showing his anger mm. when we were disobedient all through the Bible. There's various different plagues that we could talk about that, okay, he says, okay, you didn't listen. You did this. And so he did this. You know, you look back when I told you not to, and he did this. You know, so so I think he's trying to tell us something. Um, and we need to and we, we need to listen. You know, the plague and then this these marches all over, you know, I, 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 I hope, and not, not just in Omaha, it's all over. It's all over. It's out of the country. It's in Paris. It's, it's all over. You know, I, I truly believe that um, this is God's work and we, we, you can read it how you want to read, read it, whatever faith that you have or whoever it is that you believe in. Your higher person that you think that can make things like these happen all at one time, whoever that might be, or whatever that might be, uh, we need to listen. I just call on 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 people that believe in a higher being to use your faith and make a difference. At the beginning of our worship service, I made reference to the prophecy in Ezekiel about the valley of dry bones. In Ezekiel 37, here is that prophecy. The hand of the Lord came upon me, and he brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord and set me down in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones. He led me all around them. There were very many lying in the valley, and they were very dry. He said to me, Mortal, can these bones live? I answered, O Lord God, you know. Then he said to me, Prophecy to these bones, and say to them, O dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, I will cause breath to enter you, and you shall live. I will lay sinews on you, and will cause flesh to come upon you, and cover you with skin, and put breath in you, and you shall live and you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I had been commanded. And as I prophesied, suddenly there was a noise, a rattling, and the bones came together, bone to its bone. I looked, and there were sinews on them, and flesh had come upon them, and skin had covered them, but, no, but there was no breath in them. Then God said to me, Prophesy to the breath. Prophesy, mortal, and say to the breath, Thus says the Lord God, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain, that they may live. I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived and stood on their feet, a vast multitude. What did that valley of dry bones represent? It represented Israel in exile in the 6th century BCE, a place of deep despair. 
despair that had gone on for an overly long time. Indeed, Israel had been oppressed for not just a a few years in exile, but for centuries by powers greater than their own. And they wondered, how long, O Lord, must we suffer? Are you listening? Can or will anything ever be done? Ezekiel saw a vision that God was indeed doing something, a new thing, something that we could not do for ourselves. Israel not only survived the exile, but the exile, when in hindsight, became one of the greatest periods of spiritual revival that Israel has ever known. Can the dry bones of America, of those who have, are close to giving up, who are close to despairing entirely, can these dry bones yet live? And can we repair the, the physical bones of our city, of our community, of our nation, of our world with God's help? Well, C.T. Williamson has some outstanding ideas for us, I think. To pay attention to the voices of our youth. There seems to be truly an uprising of God's vision within them in particular these days. We as elders need to listen to the younger generations, not simply so that we can then throw in a word of our own, even though we do hold certain wisdom. But first, we need to listen deeply enough to learn because they're on the front lines of what the Spirit is doing in our world today. And that listening extends also to all of us who are lighter skin, listening to those who are of darker skin and truly listening. As CT suggesting, even those who have been most generously disposed with wealth uh, to uh, North Omaha, even they have listening to do. We in our churches have work to do, especially those of of our churches uh, like Countryside who are predominantly white. Listen to our members, listen to the community, and learn. Most of all, the work we have to do is to be grateful for one another. The gifts that each person in our community gives, white, black, brown, and to be grateful for the gifts that nature herself gives us and be healed, all of us. It's not going to be easy. The meal we celebrate at the end of every worship service reminds us that (laughs) Christ himself never promised us an easy road. This week I decided to make a special point of supporting African-American owned restaurants. So my bread for today's communion is uh, injera from Lolly Bella Restaurant on Saddle Creek, one of my favorites in Omaha. But we remember that on a night of betrayal and desertion, Jesus took bread and he broke this bread, saying, my friends, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this as often as you eat of it in remembrance of me. In other words, this breaking is something that needs to go deeply inside us. We need not be afraid of being broken apart Jesus himself went before us. After supper, he took the cup saying, this is the cup of the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink of it in remembrance of me. By eating this bread and drinking this cup, we remember Christ's death. We celebrate Christ's resurrection. And we know that there is no brokenness and no dry and dusty bones that God can't bring back to life. And not only back to life as it was, but life that is better than it has ever been before. Our breaking is the first step in our healing, and our healing is the first step of our thriving. The gifts of God for the people of God. Let us enjoy the feast.
Well, we hope you've found worship meaningful and hope you'll join us next week online for the next two weeks at 10 a.m. at countrysideucc.org. And then we'll be back on KMTV at 11 a.m. and for the rest of, of the summer. If you are new to Countryside, we always like to give visitors free gifts. And we can't do that when we're not physically present, but we can do this online. So if you'll go to our website, and click that free gift button. We'd love to send you an expression of our gratitude for attending this morning. While you're on the site, if you'd like to make a donation to help defray the costs of broadcasting on television, we would uh, welcome those donations as well, as well as uh, donations to our delayed Easter offering that benefits youth emergency services. And now, my friends, may the Spirit the Holy Spirit of the living God made known to us most fully in Jesus Christ our Lord. Go before you to show you the way. Go above you to watch over you. Go behind you to push you into places you may not necessarily go yourself. Go beneath you to uphold you and uplift you. Go beside you to be your strong and constant companion. And dwell within you to remind you that you are surely not alone on this journey. And you are loved, loved beyond your wildest imagination. And may the fire of God's blessing burn brightly upon you and within you and through you now and always. Amen. <laughs>